In many places around the world, football season has already begun. But here in the U.S. and in a few other nations, a new season is just about to get kicked off and started. Hello everyone, this is Rev Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. Well, today on the podcast, I'm going to talk about what it looks like to bless a season in advance, and I'm going to share about a place in the Bible where the priest is actually instructed to come and bless those that were to take on a new season of doing battle. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. He's found the space, and he's found the back of the net. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have... He has the hat-trick, the second in his career, the third of the night, the hat-trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner, goes towards the near post, and you're the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! Most of you know that I'm the volunteer chaplain for the Colorado Rapids of Major League Soccer. Well, this year marks my 20th season of serving the team as a volunteer chaplain, and I'm excited because beginning in April, April 3, actually two months from today, the season is set to get underway. At the beginning of the season, usually in the first home game of the year or before the team travels for a first away match, one of the rhythms and patterns that I've taken on as a chaplain is I take the opportunity to bless the players, the coaches, and the staff for the season ahead. And I just want to share that with you today on today's podcast. And I want you to take this on with the thought that whatever you're doing or wherever you are, whether you're in the game now or you used to play the game, you know, sometimes as spring approaches, it reminds us of those moments, whether we played as a young person or we played in college, whether we played in an academy system or whether we played for a professional team, spring kind of brings this vitality and this newness. And so I want to share with you a little bit about this blessing for the beginning of a season. Well, in the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy chapter 20, we find what I believe to be the basis for the chaplain coming to bless the team before they take on a new year. Let me read Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. When you go to war against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them, because the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt will be with you. When you are about to go into battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army. He shall say, Hear, Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not panic or be terrified by them, for the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. The officers shall say to the army, Has anyone built a new house and not yet begun to live in it? Let him go home, or he may die in battle and someone else may begin to live in it. Has anyone planted a vineyard and not begun to enjoy it? Let him go home, or he may die in battle and someone else may enjoy it. Has anyone become pledged to a woman and not married her? Let him go home, or he may die in battle, and someone else may marry her. Then the officer shall add, Is anyone afraid or faint-hearted? Let him go home, so that his fellow soldiers will not become disheartened too. When the officers have finished speaking to the army, they shall appoint commanders over it. Well, this text of Deuteronomy 20 has been the basis for me to start at the beginning of a year to bless those that I serve. Now, the context of Deuteronomy 20 is the addressing of the nation of Israel before they go into battle, before they go to war. This isn't necessarily war as we know it today. Deuteronomy 20 is part of the larger understanding for Israel in regards to what is called holy war or just war. See, there were specific rules for Israel in regards to the way that they defended the land that they lived in or in the ways that they were commanded to fight other nations and peoples in battle. Usually every springtime, there was a drawing up of battle lines because Israel would need to fight for or defend the farmlands that would be used for growing crops. And so there became this annual occurrence as different nations and peoples would be vying for the same lands to advance their own kingdoms and livelihoods. Now, I want to be careful here because I think too many times sport and battle, uh, warfare and soldiers, like too many times the, the metaphor goes the wrong way and we draw too many associations and parallels that we ought not to, especially in some religious circles. I think there's some ways that sport and and battle kind of compare to each other, but I think too, we can over-justify or over or we can make things that aren't there and associate them with sport. And it's too easy to get off track. And so we have to be real careful with this. So keeping this in mind, what 
I want us to consider that most times football, soccer, is a competitive endeavor, especially at the professional and collegiate levels. And just as God instructed that there's a right conduct, there's a right behavior when Israel went to battle, so too within the bounds of sport, there are rules, there's regulations, there's things like sportsmanship that hold us who play the beautiful game to a standard of accountability and integrity. Now, not everybody follows those things, but certainly they're there in place. And, and for us as Christians, especially, we're commanded to follow those things. So I want to focus now into verses 2 and 4 of the passage I read out of Deuteronomy. And, and if you have a Bible, you can look these over or, um, you know, I'm going to read these verses again. You can, you can go on your, your phone maybe and, and look up an online Bible. But let me read Deuteronomy 20, verses 2 through 4. When you are about to go into battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army. He shall say, Hear Israel, today you are going into battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not panic or be terrified by them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. So I just want to share a few quick points that I hope you'll carry away and consider here. First, there's this overarching theme that we have to realize for our lives. It doesn't matter whether we're a soldier fighting in a war, whether we're a professional footballer about to start a season, whether we're a student, a teacher, a janitor, a waitstaff person, no matter who we are or what God has called us to vocationally, we need to depend on Him. Let me say that again. We need to live our lives in dependence on God. Whatever task or role, whatever our place or station in life, no matter what the task or challenge that we're about to take on, Our own strength, our own abilities and talents and skills are not enough. We need God. And the truth is, God will never make us so strong uh, to the point that we don't ever need to depend on Him. And so we've got to realize this lesson for life that we need to trust and lean and depend on God. You know, there's a lot of cliches out there. We tell our things, ourselves things like, you know, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, or you just need to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Or, God helps those who help themselves. Each of these statements, though, are false and wrong narratives that we tell ourselves and others. The truth is, we need God, and we have to depend on Him, no matter what we take on, no matter what part or place in life or where we live. Here's a second theme that we can draw from this passage. That is that we are to go forward into life, into the challenges that we face, into a new season without fear. For Israel, the laws for selecting soldiers for battle and for moving forward are really an interesting study for consideration. See, there were these deferment rules that were part of that last part of the passage that I read. You know, if someone had just built a house or planted a vineyard or just gotten married, those men were sent home from battle. The leaders didn't want distracted soldiers on the battlefield. They want to kind of honor that, hey, there's this chapter of life that you uh, you should enjoy, that you should participate in. And we're going to excuse you from military service for this year or this season. Can you imagine if teams and organizations in soccer applied this logic to our own athletes and and coaches and staff? You know, maybe giving time off uh, for a season or a period of time for, you know, that wedding that has to happen or the birth of a child or other crucial life events and moments that happen. Um, I'm getting a little off topic here, but... What I want to say is, is there's these ways that we can go into a season without fear. And the priest or chaplain in our case comes out and serves to give these important reminders. Don't be faint hearted. Don't be afraid. Don't panic. Don't be terrified. You know, in studying this passage and and what I, I know a little bit about Israel back in these times, Israel wasn't this great, mighty military power. They weren't as developed and powerful like Egypt or Babylon or even later Rome. No, Israel had good military officers and leaders, but it was largely an annually conscripted force. And again, I'm no expert on this area of Bible history. You know, I I think maybe Israel had more development and advancement during King David's time, which we just got done listening to uh, last month. But here in Deuteronomy 20, you can imagine farmers and the like signing up for battle. I think this is important to note because they wouldn't have been these seasoned or professional soldiers and, and looking at an oncoming horde with perhaps more advanced technology or armaments, um, I don't know about you, but I would have turned and run. So the priest tells him, you don't have to be afraid. 
There's no need to fear, and I'll get into the why point of this here in a minute. Now, for the club I've served for so many years, one of the ways I've interpreted this and kind of translated this across is that, you know, it, it doesn't matter the amount of money that another club may spend. It doesn't matter the number of star athletes and professionals that might be lining up on the other side of the pitch. Sometimes, too, even at the higher level, you know, you can watch the, the amount of resources that a club or organization spends or the talent or wealth that an opposing team might be bringing to the table. The Rapids for so many years have usually had to make do with limited resources that they've had. And I've seen other clubs that, you know, they've got five athletic trainers treating the athletes and the Rapids maybe only have two or three. And there are examples like that. But the point is for us that it doesn't matter if we see an, another side of things that's stronger and greater and more powerful for us. We need not fear. We should not fear. And I think athletes and coaches and, and staff in the game have plenty to fear as, as we take on a new season. And certainly last year and this year have, have added and complicated that with things like COVID. There are fears, of course, about even making the team or sometimes an athlete being in the last year of a contract and, and just being afraid, you know, am I going to be renewed? Am I going to get enough chances, enough starts, enough opportunities? Or maybe someone knows, hey, this is coming to the end of my career, um, it could be another transition, like moving to another team, another city, or even another country. There can be fears about injuries or recovering from an injury. You know, will I make it? Will I, will I get back to a hundred percent? Will I get back to the way that, that I was even on the staff side? I, I know there's fears about maybe making a ticket sales quota or some other achievement or performance threshold. You know, last year was really difficult for many front office staff, not just in soccer, but in other sports as well. There's no fans in the stadiums in so many places, so th there was really no way for those sales folks to earn a living. Many of them had to leave their jobs and move away or find some other way to make, to make a living uh, during, during a difficult pandemic. But no matter what the fears that come for someone in football, we are commanded as, as, as Christians, as followers of God, as, as children of God, to not fear. Don't be faint-hearted. Don't be afraid. Don't panic don't be terrified. Well, I'd love to tell you there's some deeper, richer, hidden meaning behind these four exhortations from the priest to not be afraid. I, I don't think there are, but it's just a reinforced message for us. And it centers around the why or, or even the how, if we want to, which I want to finally speak about. So why shouldn't we be afraid? How can we not be terrified or panicky? Well, the truth is that as God is present with Israel when it came to battle and then and them walking in obedience to what God had called them to? In the same way, when we, as children of God, follow what He commands, God is with us, and He enables us and strengthens us to accomplish things that are in accordance with His will. And this last and most important theme uh, and consideration is really key for us as we approach a new season. There's no greater thing for a Christian footballer or a Christian person, uh, just to put it plainly, to consider than the importance of the presence of God in our lives. Footballer and friend Dennis Castillo, he's a defender who plays for Sporting Football Club in Costa Rica, recently posted the Instagram photo that's the artwork for today's pod. And he asked a rhetorical question in his native Spanish. ¿De qué servir el poder humano sin el poder divino? It means, what good is human power without divine power? And forgive me if I mispronounce one of those Spanish words. But that's exactly the point of what the priest is conveying in Deuteronomy 20, 2 through 4. What good is human power without divine power? Listen to verse 4 again. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. The Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. Friends, is the Lord part of your life? Do you trust him? Do you depend on him? Do you realize that he's the one that does battle? Yeah, we go, we participate, we're, we're part of this strange connection, but it has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with him. And it's him giving success. You know, many times as an elite footballer, we're so talented. We're so skillful, so strong. I think it's a real struggle to realize that, 
or were dependent on anyone, let alone God. But the truth is that God gave you your talents and skills. God has gotten you to the level of the game you're at or the team where you play. It's God who sustains you. It's God who provides for your family. It's God who gives you the joy of the game or the wage to make a living or the opportunity. And it's critically important to realize that these things happen, these successes, these victories, they come as God is present with us and as God enables us. You know, the enemies that we face aren't necessarily uh, our opponents. They're not the other team necessarily that are lining up on the other side of the pitch. They can be enemies like fear and self-doubt and depression and anxiety and, and so many other things. They, uh, there's sort of the spiritual destitutedness. There's, a, there's this battle going on that we don't see. And if we can remember that God goes with us to aid us, to protect us, to help us overcome these challenges, these tests, if we can look to him with thankfulness because he gives us the victory, then it just really goes well with our soul. And and the truth is that in our own weakness, God shines. It's his strength that gets us through. I'm reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul as as he's speaking to a church in Corinth. He he tells them, he says, he says, but he, talking about the Lord Jesus, he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul goes on, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Friends, if you read 2 Corinthians 12, uh, and I just read verses 9 and 10, uh, you'll understand that Paul was at a low point. He, ha- he had this thing going on in his life, and we don't know what, exactly what it was. But he got low, and he was struggling, and he asked God, he prayed to God so many times, take this thing away. It was really challenging for him, but, but God's response to him was, hey, my grace, my being with you through this situation, it's enough for you. And even though you feel weak, and even though you feel like a loser and, and you're losing out, I'm here with you, and I'll bring you through. I'll let you experience strength and success, not, not what you expect, but the way that I do things. You know, that kind of reminds me that, that some of the best stories in football uh, that I've seen throughout the years are not the teams that spent billions of dollars on athletes and resources to win the trophy. It's the story of the weaker side of, of a team that somehow overcomes being an, an underdog to, to win, to have the success. Even in the 20 years of serving the Rapids as volunteer chaplain, the, the teams that I've seen do the best and, and gone on to the highest levels of the game and, and success, they weren't necessarily the, the most expensive roster. They weren't necessarily the most talented of athletes. But I saw it was a group of, of guys who were bound together by something more. There were things like friendship and teamwork and, and even a certain acknowledgement hey, we're not really good at this. We're weak over here. We're not strong there. But let's play to our strengths and let's let's cover each other and and cover for each other in the midst of our weakness. As Christians, we have to remember that our weaknesses, in those things, Jesus' strength is made perfect. God's strength is amplified in the midst of our weakness and shortcomings. And, And they're not just physical weaknesses, but they're spiritual, they're mental, they're emotional weaknesses too. So friends, I, I, as we come to a close here pretty soon, I, I just want to emphasize or maybe even overemphasize as chaplain that the Lord your God goes with you. So many times, and I know this, in football, we can feel alone. You know, maybe we've had to leave our family to go play in another town or another country. God is with you. Sometimes as a Christian on the team, we can feel isolated in the locker room because we believe and behave differently from our teammates, from from those that are around us in the offices. Remember, God is with you. Sometimes we're in a difficult situation. You know, we're we're underneath a a, a difficult coach, maybe that that doesn't play us. Maybe we've had an injury and, and we've got a rehab or there's been a misdiagnosis. Maybe there's a conflict with someone in the club. We can feel weak and powerless to change our situation. But remember, God is with us. God is with you. 
God is with me in those moments. Well, friends, to close our time, I want to pray a blessing for you for the season ahead. You can actually find this prayer in our app, Soccer Chap United. Uh, it, it's spelled kind of funky. You can find it in the liner notes or something. But if you haven't downloaded the app or didn't know about it, I want to just encourage you to check it out. There's other prayers and content. Uh, this podcast is in there too. Uh, with the app though, you can listen or play this prayer and, and other prayers anytime. Anytime that your new season or your new challenge is about to begin, whether you have a chaplain or not, let let me just be your honorary virtual chaplain or something. And whether you're a footballer, a coach, a general manager, a technical director, a staff person, no matter who you are or your place in the game, as you prepare for the season ahead, I just want to remind you, don't be afraid. Trust in God. Know that He is with you. And as I pray, just know that my hands are outstretched in blessing over you as I say these words. Hear, O child of God, today you are beginning the season. Today you are beginning a time of competition against other teams and opponents. For a starting position in the team, for a place in the squad, for a new contract, for a better wage. Do not be faint-hearted. Don't be afraid. Don't be terrified or overwhelmed. Don't panic, no matter the odds, no matter the challenges to overcome. For the Lord your God goes with you. He goes before you. He is beside and behind you. The Lord your God is above and beneath you at all times and in all ways. He is with you to fight for you. He is with you to give you victory and success, His success. Whether you need a contract extension or an opportunity, or a new opportunity. And whether this be your first season or it be your last, He will watch over you. He is your shade, your protection, the covering over you. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. He watches over your coming and your going. He won't let your foot slip on the pitch or off of it. Trust in Him. He gives you the ultimate victory. Amen. Well, this is Red Brad coming to you from the Touchline.